you're watching Sky Sports, your home of sport. Listen than me. It's never the talent in cricket I found which made a cricketer outstanding. It was how ambitious what he dreamt of. We have to dream. The bigger the dream, the bigger the man. saw him ball and I wanted to be like him simple as that great personality great leader great role model he was a strong confident proud man he's my hero he's my idol as a bowler he was a potent strike bowler I have to pick one player one name comes straight away the great Imran Khan he was born into a middle-class family in Lahore, in, in, a, in a family estate, shall we say. And I think that family upbringing was a massive influence on him. He also had cousins who were Pakistan cricketers. His elder cousin, Javed Boki, was a Pakistan captain. Majid Khan, his, another cousin of his, also captain Pakistan. So he was surrounded by cricket and by, I guess, role models. When I first played against him in school cricket, even then, he bowled quite sharp, and he had a very Jeff Thompson-like action. He went to Aitchison College in uh, Lahore, which is the most well-known school probably in Pakistan, certainly in Lahore. I think Imran, it'd be fair to say, came from a reasonably privileged background. I'm not sure huge amounts of money, but reasonably privileged background. His domestic performance earned him a game for Pakistan 11 against an international 11 side in Pakistan, where he scored a half century, and that's the thing that really got him a ticket to England and also brought him to the attention of Worcestershire. In 1971, Imran Khan made a disastrous test debut against England and it appeared his international career could be over before it had begun. He then turned his attention to education at Oxford's prestigious Keeble College, where he captained the university side and played the odd county match for Worcestershire. I remember Imran coming and playing for Worcestershire as I, we would say in the trade, as a big, filthy in-swing bowler, at little pace, 75 miles an hour, he got fit and strong and started racing him and as quick as anything around, and nasty. You know, he could be nasty with it. In 1974, Khan picked up his first test wicket against England at Headingley, three years after making his debut. But it was his shock move to Sussex in 1977 that really kick-started his career and brought him closer to London. He always wanted to be around London. He always wanted to play cricket around London. And Sussex suited him. Uh, the pitch suited him and because it's uh, near sea, he got sea breeze. And once he started at worst of all, that helped him uh, no end. It is fantastic uh, for him. So that's where you can say things started to change for him. The first thing I remember is that when he arrived here in Sussex, 1977, uh, he was more of a medium pace bowler, swung the ball, he had a sort of open action, swung the ball. One of the guys who helped him uh, in his bowling was John Snow, who was at Sussex. And he changed into a more what you might call traditional sideways action, and Imran, to some extent, did the same. Imagine a bowler 
changing his whole action that's impossible that's unheard of and after two years he worked on his action proper cartwheels sideways so it means he was also very tough mentally and very hard working bloke and his physique developed you know uh, you know he, he he grew into himself even more and became a top rate bowler and was always a very talented batsman very talented ball player hitting the ball so he had both which turned him into a ultimately into a great all-rounder he would captain a lot of times but when he was at Sussex John Barclay JRT Barclay was his captain you're dealing with a superstar but he didn't have that sort of status I think that when you've got rare talent outstanding talent uh, within any teamwork it needs to be accommodated um, sensibly within the concept of the team there were moments when um, uh, certainly I expect I as captain would be uh, not accused because nobody did that but would say you know you know Johnny they'd say you're always pandering to that Imran and I'd say as well I might because he's gonna win us a match or two with Imran Khan's performances turning heads in the cricket world he was fast becoming a national hero back home in his beloved Pakistan Imran was uh, the first truly national inspirational figure that, that Pakistan had. In, uh, there, there were other great cricketers before him, there were role models, but not in the way that Imran brought the whole country together. He had a huge impact on younger generation. We grew up watching him, admiring him. Uh, you know, I still remember we used to even copy him how to talk. I was, was a die-hard fan. He was huge in Ram Khan, not just for cricket, the way he carried himself on and off the field, the way he spoke, uh, the, he, the way he was as a playboy image as well, so a bit of a naughty image of Imran worked as well. When we were growing up uh, as a cricketer, I think most of the uh, players, they used to follow him uh, because uh, everybody praises him, whenever he plays, he performed really well and he wins lots of matches for Pakistan, you know. So, you can say, yeah. He was the main man uh, behind our cricket at that time. I used to put the poster in my, where I used to uh, sleep, you know, in that area. And uh, being an all-rounder, I always uh, grew up watching Imran Khan. He's my hero, he's my idol. We produced some really good cricketers uh, just by watching him, just by following him. And I think uh, he's been a serious, uh, seriously a godfather to all of us. Khan's ability with both bat and ball was obvious. But there was more to his success than just natural talent. He had to work really, really, really hard. And looking at his career, looking at um, where he wanted to finish up, he actually worked it out what he wanted to do. Well, always wanted to become fast bowler. As soon as he entered international cricket, he started thinking, and this is typical of Imran, you know, how do I become the best I can become? He used to be a workhorse. You know, if he wasn't bowling in the nets, he was fielding, he was training. So I think, uh, you know, this is what uh, Imran Khan gave to Pakistan cricket. He used to run and run and run and then bowl and bowl and bowl and bat and bat and bat. If his uh, team bowlers were tired, he would have some local bowlers bowling to him and he would make sure that those local bowlers were bowling to him from 15, 16 yards so that he could get that pace that he's going to face at international cricket. Then he would go out on the field and actually perform and, and actually actually show you why, why he worked so hard and, and, why, and then he delivered. So you ended up believing in him. As Imran's reputation grew on the pitch, so did the interest in his life off it. With dashing good looks and oozing charisma, he quickly became one of the faces of London's A-list celebrity scene. Imran would take on the image of a very social person and lots of friends and girlfriends and that. And to some extent, I think that probably was true to some extent but he also was very committed to his game and his sport his training and his practice I used to go out with him he used to carry me come on guys let's go out and I've seen uh, uh, you know like girls standing in a queue in Australia just to meet Imran Khan for me I was an eye-opener a Pakistani playing in Australia and there were queues outside the hotel or outside the restaurant just to shake hand with the great Imran Khan. And I loved every minute of it, just spending time with him off the field, more off the field than on the field, I can promise you that. <laughs> you know, he didn't drink at all. Um, 
he went out with one or two more well-known people, but, you know, he was quite quiet. Um, you know, he's not a party, he's not, Imran's not a party animal, never was at all. He's quite quiet and, you know, um, measured. In the early 80s, cricket in Pakistan was changing under the guidance of both Imran Khan and the gritty street fighting qualities of Javid Miandar. When uh, we were growing up uh, and uh, Javed was acting as a vice captain under Imran Khan, I think it was a great help to Imran. We always praised him as well because in the beginning, Imran Khan was not a very good captain or not a very good learner. He was also a very hard worker man. They knew what was happening. They knew what to do, what sort of field setting we needed, what sort of uh, mindset we needed as a team or as, as individual bowlers. So they were great help, not just to me, to every youngster around them. And we owe them, we owe these two guys a lot. Pakistan as a team were known as being a team of individuals. They didn't especially get on. First step he, did, he made as a captain was actually to drop Majid Khan. Who oh, Majid was at that stage Prince of Pakistan cricket. Nobody could touch him, uh, and he was his uh, first cousin. So that actually gave everybody it, it, the sign was there. This guy is going to be honest. As the personnel changed under Imran's captaincy, so did the Pakistan mentality. It was very important for Imran and for us as a team and team members that we go out and we fight it out. Fight like tigers, I think, was the sort of line, and he gelled them together. He he made them into that sort of unit, and of course, then they were very dangerous. I reckon he changed the psyche of Pakistan cricket. The psyche was to go out and compete and work hard, and you can win against any side in the world. That's the that's the point he actually emphasised on. And that's why he changed the psyche. In the dressing room, it could be scathing. He would fire the hell out of the guys if they don't put in 100%. But out there, with the media and general public, he would stand up for his team. He would stand up for all the individuals in the team. And that's how people came to respect him. I remember uh, there was a game in Sealkot in 86. And I, was, I came out a number 11 batsman. And Imran said, don't play a silly shot. And what do I do when I walk in? Play the silly shot. So I thought, okay, we have, everybody's changing now. We're going to go out to bowl. Imran probably will, you know, he'll forget about it. But no. I got up in the dressing room, went right into the bathroom, just to hide from Imran. And what did Imran do? He followed me with his spikes on. What did I tell you? Told you not to play a silly shot. You're not going to improve as a batsman. So then I realized. He always believed if number 9, 10, 11, if they're fighting it out, fighting it out is blocking, you know, trying to get extra run here and there, it means the team spirit is there. Khan's performances with bat and ball during the 1980s elevated him to one of the world's greatest all-rounders. You know, uh, all uh, those all-rounders, four of them, Richard Hadley, Kapil Dev, Imran Khan, Sari and Botham, Imran for me is their top ultimate because I knew him inside out. Imran Khan really stood out for me as a very consistent, reliable performer. He could bat anywhere in the order, uh, certainly bat in the top six, sometimes bat at number four, and he could score runs at a, at a casual pace or a blistering pace. When he played as a batsman, he played either way. He could just hold a game together or he could extend the game. Sometimes you get all-rounders, especially bowling all-rounders, who think like bowlers. But he, he was, he actually thought like a batsman, compiled his innings like a batsman. And then he played according to the situation of the game. As a bowler, he was a potent strike bowler. You know, wound up in delivery, wide of the crease, angled it in with the big swing. And uh, his record is, is an outstanding one. As he developed into one of cricket's great all-rounders, it was Khan's ability to spot and nurture young talent that was going to become his real legacy. In particular, Wasim Akram. He was a kind of person, he can pick talent from street, from nowhere, and then within no time, groom them for the bigger events even. He, he can make uh, people stars. And Wasim was, was a natural successor. He was prince to Imran's king. Yes, that's out. Well bowled. Beautiful piece of bowling. And the whole stage was set before him to take on Imran's mantle. He's the best fast bowler we've seen for some time. 
and then I met Imran at New South Wales. I remember he was at the airport and uh, uh, he was uh, flying in from somewhere at Sydney airport and I think we were flying in from uh, Auckland and that's where I saw him first time in front of me. And the very first game Basim took 5-4 against Australia and, and Imran was absolutely astounded that somebody had come along and, and you get a lot of people um, when a, a new guy comes in and starts to upstage you, it would be very jealous of the person. But Imran was totally the opposite. He saw that as, as Pakistan's chance. He saw some Pakistan unearthed somebody who, who, were going, who were destined to become a great, great player. And he looked at me and he knew my name. He said, well, Bol Vaseem, you are very talented. And my heart gone that big. I mean, coming from my hero, who I just uh, who I used to admire and used to go to the stadium to watch their practice, sit in the corner outside the stadium. And he was telling me he knew my name and he was praising me. He also uh, introduced Bakar Yunus uh, to international cricket. He, he was uh, watching him play on TV and thought, wow, this guy's rather amazing. And before you know it, he was, he was in the international side. I remember Imran, uh, uh, Imran had told me once, uh, the test match, uh, it was the fifth day, it was a draw, and he said, you tired? I said, yeah, I bowled quite a bit, although I'm just 20, 21, but I'm tired. He said, okay, I want you to bowl one spell, half an hour spell, run in. I said, why, but test match is almost a draw? He said, because your bowling muscles will get strong, and that's how you generate pace eventually, and he was absolutely right. This is what Imran Khan gave to Pakistan. Uh, he made these boys, uh, uh, you know, he made them work hard, he made them realize that you can have all your fun off the field, but, you know, cricket should be your passion because you are only known because of the game. In February 1985, Imran Khan lost his beloved mother after a long battle with cancer, something that was going to change Khan forever. It was an absolutely massive blow to him personally and there were two reasons for that beyond the fact that you're losing your mother at a young age. Number one was the fact that she died in such pain and he saw his mother in pain and he felt unable to do anything about this. The second factor was that he discovered that actually this cancer that she had was, would have been treatable or she'd have, she'd have had a better chance of survival if it had been picked up earlier. He was quite a broken man and he took it very, very badly. But on the other hand, what he did uh, inspire him to do was to build this hospital. And, and, and he, when he first started out, he didn't really believe that it could happen. But gradually things started to fall into place and, and, and that's was a big, in, in fact, Forget about cricket, that's the biggest service he's done to Pakistan. Back on the cricket pitch in the summer of 1987, Imran Khan led Pakistan to a first ever series win in England with a masterclass in both batting and bowling. A lot of his drive was to set right the wrongs of the colonial age, so he wanted to be England in England. Yes. to start winning against England in England. He wanted to make sure Pakistanis weren't perceived as being secondary to any other nation or any other race. Pakistan won the five-match test series 1-0, with Imran taking 21 wickets and averaging nearly 50 with the bat. Later that year, Imran Khan retired from cricket. But very soon after his retirement, he was at a function for the Pakistan team, um, uh, hosted by the then uh, President Zal Haq, who, who, who was the President of Pakistan. And uh, Zal Haq took him round to one side and he said, I'm going to ask you to come out of retirement and I want you to say yes, because it's your duty to help your country. It proved to be the right decision for both Khan and Pakistan, with Imran recording his highest score in Test cricket in 1990 with the gritty 136 against Australia in Adelaide. Drive, that's down the ground, that's knocked away by Campbell. The going through the single, that's 100 for Imran. Well played, a superb captain's knock. But it was two years later that Khan led his team to the ultimate prize. In the end, he won us a World Cup of the 92, and I still remember it. Every Pakistani who watched that World Cup still remembers it like, remembers it like it was yesterday. 
first few games, first round, we were very down because Pakistan wasn't playing well that time. But we had hope that nah, we can win the World Cup. The minute we started, he said we're going to win this World Cup because he was about to build a hospital free for poor and still working perfectly fine. Have poor people get free uh, treatment there for cancer. We had a bad start. Uh, we lost our three games. You know, West Indies, South Africa, India. So that was the time when Imran and the other senior players took over and just gave us the boost and try to feel confident that we can, we can, we can win the tournament. We were all, all sitting in, in the dressing room. Here comes Imran, wearing a shirt, the tiger on. He just carried in and said, "Look, I want to say something. Come, everyone, come closer." You know that. 10 minute speech actually changed everything. I just told them that, listen, you know, just be as if, you know, you're a cornered tiger. Against all the odds, Khan's Pakistan side made it to the World Cup final against an England team who had bowled them out for just 74 runs in a pool match earlier in the tournament. From being almost out of the competition, uh, they got to the final and their last three or four games they'd absolutely steamrolled it over people so we knew it was a completely different team um, that we were going to play against in the final. Um, Imran had got them together. I still remember the World Cup final when Imran Khan went in for the toss before the match. He was wearing a green t-shirt with a lion printed on the front of it. When the England captain Graham Gooch came up for the toss, he pointed out that his lion looked down and Imran Khan replied straight away, when the match is over, it will be your lions that will be down and out. I think at that stage in the early 90s, he was a more, you know, mature sort of player. Uh, he took a brave move to pr promote himself in the order in that World Cup final and, and got runs. Nobody talks about it, but it's a, it was a massive decision. Imagine if he would have failed. First 35 overs, everybody was saying, what Imran and Javed Miyadad is doing? They're not making runs. We are not going to win. I dropped him in a big sky at mid-wicket. And after 35 overs, when they picked up the run rate, oh my God. And then I remember Waz coming in towards the end of the innings and he hit some amazing shots. I came, got 33 of 18 balls. So we got to 249, if I remember exactly. Okay. And it was slow going for a while. And then it came down to a partnership between myself and, and Lammy. And we put 60 or 70 on and got us right back in the game. And Imran said, I reckon you should come for two hours. We need a wicket because partnership was building up. I said, sure, I'm warmed up, skipper. The ball to Alan Lamb was the perfect round the wicket, outswinging reverse ball. It was absolutely on the button, unplayable. So I bowled that delivery. He missed it completely, off stem gone. And I think uh, that was it. And it was Imran Khan himself who claimed the final wicket to win Pakistan the World Cup. Perfectly. I mean, he deserved that, I reckon. And he bowled his slow ball. I think Illingworth, Illy was the batsman, Ramiz was the catcher. And, I, you know, it, it didn't register us for about two, three days to all of us that we won the World Cup. It's when we landed back into Pakistan then we realized we did something out of the <laughs> extraordinary. It was something the whole country was so happy. We all felt that that World Cup was Imran's dream. There's nothing else we can say that it, it was about his vision, his mindset. And he knew he was taking a gamble, that I have to win the World Cup if I am to get the cancer hospital. So that's, that was his obsession. He knew that if he won the World Cup, the support he would get in Pakistan, the funding that he required, that would materialize because people would be so delighted with the victory. He also knew that if he didn't get the victory, it could spell disaster. The Pakistani people are really emotional. Um, I would say if we didn't won that World Cup, they, they would not support Imran for, for, for the hospitals. I think that was really important for him to win the World Cup. And then, you know, we believe that 
that day was the, the biggest day for Pakistan. Uh, not as as only only sporting event, but as general people were so happy. Imran Khan finished his career with 362 test wickets in 88 matches, with a batting average of just under 38. But to the people of Pakistan and many more around the world, he will always be much more than just a cricketer. I'm probably the only cricketer, a friend, who told him, you have no other choice, you will finish up uh, going into politics. And it happened years ago, and, and he said, you're silly, you're stupid, you're mad. And I said, no, I'm telling you, this is what is going to happen to your life. I would back him do whatever he's doing because this is, this is, this is his time to, to pay back. i never seen him uh, living a life which is self-centered. Uh, you always have something, something bigger to achieve. This is my prediction that after some time, people will realize that he is the best ever leader of Pakistan. I think one day he will become a Prime Minister of Pakistan and he is the one who will change things around.